just invite everybody to go ahead and uh, we'll include questions during the talk. And if we do have some follow-ups, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to walk around and chat, and if something is particularly unclear or you have a, a pressing question, uh, feel free to just raise your hand, and I'll call on you when there's a, uh, an appropriate break. So I'm ready to get started if y'all are. Is everybody doing okay today? Yeah. Good. That's the energy I like to hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Brian Krogsgaard. I run a website that does news and information for WordPress professionals, so people that make their living with WordPress. It's a membership website, so today we're going to talk about running membership websites, some things that I've learned and some things that I've screwed up. Uh, but I want to get a take of my audience to understand what angle we should go at this from. So if you could just raise your hand, I apologize that I make you participate. Uh, but if you could raise your hand, if you either run your own uh, membership website or have an interest in running your own membership website. And uh, also for people that make or have interest in making membership websites for other people. Okay, so some overlap here. And do we have anyone that is not interested in e-commerce or membership websites at all? Because we might convert you. Okay, we don't have to worry about that audience. Um, why are you listening to me? I mentioned post status. It's a WordPress new site. And uh, until about a year and a half ago, I did not make money from this website. But uh, I decided to go full time on post status after uh, a short career, uh, I guess, doing client work. I'm an engineer by training. And I did, I was a developer. And I quit my job in order to go all in on post status and try to turn it into my full time living, which I've successfully done. I now have about 700 members. I have 12 corporate partners. Um, my first year of business, um, I managed to make, I, I believe in transparency, which I'll show you in a minute, I managed to make about $91,000 of revenue, meaning that it was a sustainable thing for me to make my living. Um, so I'm going to try to share what I've learned and try to help you do the same. So, like I said, I made my blog my business, and I do that from my desk every day. I'm not sure if you've noticed I'm not from Boston. Uh, so, I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and we do have the internet there, um, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here with you. My two-year goal is a thousand members, so my first thing that I want to encourage you interested in making your own website is to figure out what is your goal, both for sustainability, like this is a real thing, and then actual, like where I want to be, because you're not going to be there in six months or a year. Um, you may not be there in two years, but eventually you should be able to uh, build your audience and if you verify that there's a market for what you're making, then it can be realistic. I'm only partway to my two year thousand member goal, so I have a ways to go in the, uh, in the uh, thousand, thousand person march. Uh, step one is obviously to have a blog. So if you're working on your membership site or you have an idea for what you want to be a membership site, you're not just going to be able to turn it on and make money from day one. You're probably going to have to give away a lot of time and energy um, through writing blog posts, creating an audience, and uh, you're not going to get paid for that at first. I've been writing about WordPress since 2010. Post status has existed since 2013, January 2013. I turned on the monetization component with the membership side of things exactly two years later. So I gave away a lot of free content uh, to try to generate the, uh, the level of an audience where I thought I could actually make, living, make a living from it. And it's not just a matter of generating content. Uh, you actually want to make it good content, and a page view does not mean that it's going to be good content. Sometimes um, you need to choose, and it depends on the market and what type of uh, monetization strategy you want to make, but generally, if you're looking to get people to join a membership site, then they're valuing your authority more than they're valuing your ability to get them as a page view. So you may, you're probably not going to get someone to join your membership website because you wrote some listicle of the 30 best WordPress themes to download. Instead, you want to develop an authority about your topic, whatever that is. For me, that was WordPress. So I tried to write about topics that were important in my industry in order to 
be established as like a serious person. And then you need to be diligent. Uh, this is like the number one reason blogs fail is because they just get burned out in one way or another. And the most important thing, both in your blog and then also in your membership site once you get going, is to tr try to establish consistency and reliability so that they're hearing from you consistently every week or every two days or every month, whatever your schedule is that you develop for them. And then you need to recognize opportunity. Um, you have to be very blunt with yourself about how big is your market size. So if you're writing um, about dentistry, if your membership site is for dentists, then you can narrow down like how many dentists are there in the U.S. market or worldwide. Am I targeting both? Uh, or am I targeting just dentists in Massachusetts? And you can create a potential market share and then you have to figure out, okay, well, what percentage of this market can I convert to actually be my customers? So for me, I was thinking, okay, maybe there's 10,000 people paying attention to WordPress to the degree that I pay attention to WordPress, where they actually might pay some money to learn about it. And then it was, well, what percentage of that can I actually convert? So that's how I got to this number of maybe it's realistic to have 1,000 members. Uh, maybe five years down the road, maybe I can have 2,000 members. And you have to then use that market to figure out what your pricing is going to be. So for monetization, um, I've so far just talked about the, uh, the initial membership thing, but you can actually go multiple avenues. Um, and you have, to, you have to figure your monetization and your pricing based on that potential market share and what you think the, the market can bear. So can they get that information somewhere else? then it's going to be harder for you to, say, charge uh, $1,000 a year. So I actually ended up um, charging $99 a year as my default. So when I talked about the 700 members, um, that's where those $99, I'll get into an additional plan that I had in a little bit. Um, and then I went with 12 partners in addition to that. So your membership site doesn't just have to be monetized from your membership subscriptions. Um, you can have memberships, donations, products, partners, affiliate revenue, you can do events, and you can sell ads. I actually um, do a kind of a combination between partners and ads. So in order to float my business for a few months while I figured out that people would actually join it, I actually reached out to some people that I knew and um, essentially did fundraising for partners or advertisers. And I gave them a year-long deal, and that gave me the first $30,000 of revenue to help me be able to have money while I try to market this thing and see if it's going to be legit uh, in the long term. And you can, uh, you can do something like that with a partner or gain advertising or you can go some other routes. You can have additional products. You could have a membership site where you keep it exclusive but it's free to join, but then you upsell them a related product. So maybe your membership website is about podcasting. So how to uh, create a great podcast and then your product is a podcast plugin of some sort for WordPress that you then upsell to those members. So that's actually a free membership website where you're monetizing products. So you have to think through those things and which route you want to go, and you might merge them as well. Um, and another particularly interesting monetization strategy that a lot of websites are using, a lot of bigger publications are using, is events. Um, so you may have an exclusive event just for your members uh, where you bring in some of the influencers within your industry and then you charge us a considerable amount of money. Um, something like WordCamp, we're only paying whatever it is, 25, 40 bucks, something like that, to come here. But a lot of events, people can pay $400, $4,000, depending on what type of event it is. And you can make that a way to also make money within your industry. Uh, specifically on the membership standpoint, I wanted to talk about a, a few websites and um, organizations that are pretty interesting to me. So this is a, a short list, but I think they're fascinating. Stratechery is a guy, uh, he actually worked at Automatic. Before that, he worked at Apple and Microsoft. And he has established himself as an authority um, in the tech space. And he does a three times per week member newsletter. Then he does one free article per week that he writes for the broader audience, and that's essentially in addition to direct referrals, that's his primary marketing method. He's probably one of the best paid writers in the country uh, because the last time I actually saw him and say how many members he had, I think it was 3,000. 
So at 99 bucks a pop for the year, uh, for a writer, that's not bad, you know? <laughs> uh, and that was several months ago, and his growth curve was looking pretty steep, so he's probably doing okay. And uh, a lot of journalists in particular that have a, a niche in a particular industry, um, you are already on your way to being an authority in something, and if you jumped the train and did your own thing, like there's more avenues than making $25,000 in a newsroom. Um, Pinch of Young is a food blog, and they have kind of a multifaceted approach um, with private content, but also forums and discussions. Um, and discussion forum type of stuff is getting easier and easier, which looks like Slack, where people are more and more comfortable with live chat and not just like go back and check it type of stuff like the traditional forum. Um, Fizzle is a how to build your best business type of thing. It's more drip style course content. They have an interesting strategy because they used to do a try it for a dollar and then they uh, you do it for a month and then they start charging whatever it was, like $30 a month. And they found a lot of growth that way. Tokyo Elevation, Troy actually spoke here earlier today. Their strategy is fascinating because they went the different route than me. They were going for people that were looking to level up their business and it's elevation. Um, and they went at a higher price point. So let's say it's $1,000 for a course instead of $100 for a year. And to support $1,000 per person, you don't need as many people. So where I need 1,000 people, he needs 100 people to make the same revenue. So if you can get it sold to 100 people and make them feel like they got the value out of it, then that's great. You have less customer support than I do. Um, so there's many ways to approach it. The information is another one. Anybody heard of the information? Um, it's a, a technology blog that's purely subscription based and they are doing really well. And what's beneficial to that is they're kind of escaping this like traditional uh, scary land of advertising based publications that just get stuck uh, trying to reach page views and that's how you end up with you know, all the clickbait bullcrap that we have on the web. Um, so I think there's a lot of benefits to uh, membership websites and subscriptions. We've certainly seen the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, and multiple other big publications at least, if not fully go towards subscriptions, at least be able to uh, improve their balance sheets by using subscriptions and membership as part of that. And a lot of those big publications use WordPress, by the way. All right. Planet Fitness versus CrossFit. This is a strategy of how you want to engage people. Uh, a Planet Fitness, I heard on a podcast one time, I think it was an NPR Planet Money podcast. I think some of their branches, they have like 5,000 members or something like that. And the most people they can fit in their gym is, I don't know, 500 or 50, something ridiculous. So they actually want to only charge you $10 a month so that then no one shows up and it's not like serious and you don't get super into it. And then when it comes time to renew, you're just like, oh, whatever, it's $10 a month. That's certainly one way to go, but it's a lot more exciting to me when you have uh, a model more like CrossFit's where you might charge a good bit to like stand in this metal box with a bunch of other people that are like jumping up and down and throwing kettlebells around, um, but you're happy to spend that money because you have a lot more than just this box. You have people, you have accountability, you have a program, and you have people that are really, really interested in getting more fit and they're willing to go all in. And that's a way more exciting style of customer than the Planet Fitness model. So consider that in your membership model as well, and I think that can really nicely translate across industries. Netflix versus Amazon is another interesting uh, component. So I have a yearly membership, and I chose that deliberately. Uh, I haven't tested yet whether it's a perfect choice, but I have gotten to the point of renewals. Um, so I've got about 85% renewal rate so far this year, um, about whatever it's been, seven, eight months into the potential time for renewals. And the reason that I went yearly was because if I went monthly at my price range, then it's like $9.99 a month, and it's sitting in their uh, bank statement or whatever it is, right next to their uh, Netflix subscription, their HBO subscription, things like that. And I really don't want to compete in terms of someone questioning, did I receive value with Game of Thrones and all these other programs out there, Orange is New Black, uh, whatever. So Amazon also follows a yearly model. So if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get all this crap from Amazon and you kind of end up just saying like, oh, whatever, I'll just buy it off Amazon because I have Amazon Prime and I can 
and shit myself a refrigerator with free shipping. Um, and then at the end of the year, you're like, did I get value from this? It's like, I don't know. I've shipped myself a refrigerator for free. That's pretty cool. I, I don't know if that was worth $99 or not. I can tell you it is. Uh, I found out shipping a shoebox to Cape Town, South Carolina, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, costs like $360. Uh, so shipping's expensive, and Amazon has this fuzzier value add. And Amazon doesn't care if you use Amazon Music, or free shipping, or Amazon Prime streaming, or anybody else got a quirky Amazon feature that you might use? They don't care. They just want you to be an Amazon Prime member, and they're going to do everything they can across the board to create value for you so that at the end of the year, when it's ready to renew, and they don't even tell you it's going to renew, by the way, uh, <laughs> that you're not mad about it because you're just like, whatever, I got awesome value out of my Amazon Prime membership. So that's why I decided to go yearly with my membership model because whether it was the newsletter or the Slack access that people have or deals that they get from our corporate, my cor uh, corporate partners or a party that I threw at WordCamp US, it doesn't matter. I just wanted them to be able to look at one or all of these things and say, you know what, I received value. I'm happy to pay $99 in Purdue. Um, so consider that when you're talking about uh, how to do your pricing. And there's a really cool term for the monthly model. Anytime you're paying monthly and you're not using it, there's my friend uh, Chris Lemma, he writes about membership websites a lot. You'll probably know him, ChrisLemma.com. He told me, in Cape Town, South Africa, by the way, um, he told me that every time someone looks at that charge and they didn't utilize it, There's a, uh, it's called incremental regret. So every month it builds up where you're not utilizing it. Maybe you're just busy with client work or whatever, but they're not utilizing your product. They're having incremental regret about having purchased your membership. And I really want to avoid that. I just want them to look at it once at the end of the year and make that judgment call, was it worth it or was it not? Pricing needs to include bracketing. Uh, I've been talking to you and saying, the, my website costs $99 a month. Well, you can also pay $365 a month. And, or, sorry, $99 a year, or you can pay $365 a year. The $365 a year is easy to translate to a dollar a day, right? So, therefore, $99 a year is way less than a dollar a day. And that's how I want people to think about it. So it makes the $99 deal feel more valuable. And you can include stuff in the 365 deal or whatever your higher level deal is. Um, you can include stuff there, but it's really there to make the one you want people to buy the most feel like they're getting a better bargain. And then the additional uh, benefit that you get is some people are just going to buy the more expensive one because that's what they do. Uh, so I've had about 10% of my customers buy the 365 one even though the benefits of the 365 one are fairly fuzzy, it's shipping them that shoebox that I was talking about with swag, and it's uh, calling them a patron instead of just a member, things like that that are a little feel good, but they're a little difficult to nail down. But some people are always going to go for that. That's the, your buddy that gets the $8 beer instead of the $5 beer, and you know nobody wants to be the person getting the like $2.50 beer or whatever, and you're drinking like the water beer at the table. That's right. Another way to miss out is if you don't offer bulk subscriptions to your membership website. Unfortunately, the technology here is pretty difficult to wrangle sometimes. Um, it is getting better, but what you can do is you can offer corporate membership, especially if you're approaching professionals with whatever your niche is for your membership site. So you can say, if you buy 10 or more, I'll give it to you for $69 instead of $99. And all of a sudden, you might have companies that not only do they do the bulk deal, but now your content, your membership site is a key part of their company culture, and you've now created something that is important and valuable to their company, their employees, and now your website is something they're talking about. And if you can sell 10 or 20 or 30 in one go, it's worth the 30% discount versus selling each individual person. So don't forget uh, offering a bulk option, but you may, may not want to just put it on the base thing, but like just make sure they know it's available. Seasonality is another thing that you're certainly going to struggle with. Any business has seasonality where you have ups and downs. You know, maybe before the holidays is the biggest time for retail. 
um, in software and products and uh, soft businesses like uh, a subscription and membership website, I've certainly found that summer is a slower time than the rest of the year because that's when people are on vacation, they're off of school, the kids are more expensive because they want popsicles from the ice cream truck every day. Whatever it is, um, seasonality is a, an important thing. So consider that not only when you're launching, but also when you're analyzing your business growth. Um, when, I, when I launched, it was actually in January, which might not be the best time, but I was kind of going for those people that are like excited, New Year's resolution, ready to go. Plus, you know, I put my job in December, so I had to launch at some point. Um, and because I went the yearly model, I had to plan well because my surge of income, both from the initial partners and from the initial subscribers, I made a lot more money in January, February, March than I did April, May, June, July, August. So like my chart of income goes like, and then and then at the end it goes like this. So you have to plan your year out, and just like freelancers are well aware, you know, it can be boom or bust a lot of times. So I would recommend if you're doing a membership website, figure out what your market looks like, figure out what your average is going to look like, and then pay yourself out of that account less than that. So my first year, I didn't know what I was going to make, but I decided to pay myself $2,500 a month as my salary, and anything at the year end that had costs and everything else uh, still available, that was what I considered like my profit. So I obviously gave myself, compared to like a potential developer salary, a significant pay cut, but you're also working for yourself, and that is worth it in that first year because you're trying to make sure this is a sustainable business. I talked about diversifying your um, your potential revenue. You may want to wait on that. Like you might not want to on day one say I'm going to have five different products because what you run into is like you sell them and then people have questions and then you have to answer those questions and then you might end up loaded down with administrative effort. Um, so you do want to diversify, but you want to be strategic with the way you diversify and offer those new products and uh, those new services at the right time. Um, but over time, especially, diversification is going to be important. Um, I talked about renewals. I say that was around 85%. For your business and what you do, it really depends on um, what you need to reach and what the type of course is. Like, so there's some courses where or some online subscription services where it might not be like a uh, lockdown, I need a super high renewal rate. It might be you're learning something and then you're kind of done. And then maybe you need to consider do you want renewals built in or do you actually just want to make it a one-time course purchase because then you're not even giving people the challenge of whether or not to renew. Um, or the other thing that you can consider in that situation is maybe a drip campaign, especially if your content is the type of thing where it's monthly, and someone can cancel it any time, so they actually subscribe, they go download everything, and then they cancel it, and they're only member for one month, but they got all your content, they can access it whenever they want. Maybe consider drip, maybe consider whether you truly need renewals, and maybe instead you'll just do an upfront price or something like that. But once you do start doing renewals, you wanna, you wanna capture that. Uh, one of the most important things for actually being able to get people to renew to get people to see value in your service, they're not gonna just log into your WordPress website all by themselves constantly because they gave you a little bit of money. Even if they give you a lot of money, they may completely forget to ever engage with your course. I was talking to Troy from WP Elevation right before this, and he was saying to me that uh, some terrible percentage, like less than 10% of people on average actually finish the course that they pay for. So you wanna keep them engaged. There's no better way to keep people engaged and reminded of you and what you're doing than email. Everybody hates email though, so it's like this uh, weird balance that you have to do where you're balancing annoying people annoying people with email versus standing in front of them. Well, the best way to not annoy them with email is make your emails not suck. So for your membership <laughs> website, I actually don't even assume that anyone is reading the members only content on the website. Instead, I email it to them, but I don't email them like the title and a snippet and now go click and log in on my website and spend 30 minutes over there or whatever. I just email them everything that I wrote. So, in full. And then the way I engage, I engage whether or not my members are paying attention is do they open it? If it's one that's got a lot of clickable stuff, do they click it? And I track those metrics and then I also track through the Slack activity whether they're talking about it, whether they message me about it, whether they disagree, I don't care if they disagree, I just want them to talk. I want to 
get a feel for whether they're engaging with that content. And the best way to do that engagement is email. People this still rules and dominates. <coughs> it's convenient that this says stop and listen because I can talk it really fast and my voice is tired. Yeah. Feedback from your customers is incredibly important. Um, in your membership website, you might be your greatest critic um, because you're thinking about your membership website, what you're doing, what you're offering constantly, every day. And it's important to get feedback from your customers of are you doing a good job, are you doing a bad job, where can you improve, what are easy wins. And if they're not coming to you uh, without you asking, then ask. Uh, stop what you're doing, create some very simple survey or something, and then ask either key customers, maybe key customers first, and then follow up with all customers. Ask them for feedback, provide a survey, make it informal, like maybe you can do a call on Skype or Slack or something like that, and get feedback about how you can do better so that you can make a better product, make happier customers, and then you create a funnel there where those happy customers are going to recommend your membership site to other people. I talked a little bit about features so far, so I don't want to get too much more into that, um, but the, like I said, the biggest feature you're going to have is your email, and then the other thing I would say is you're not going to have your membership website set up exactly how you want from day one. So launch it is the most important thing. Uh, be ready to deliver great content, and then especially with technical features and stuff, be prepared to do that over time. One, once you have new revenue, if you're not doing your own development stuff, so that you can invest into developing those new features. Um, and just make sure that you're not like delaying making money because the features aren't there. Another thing that I find incredibly valuable is being part of a mastermind. So I have a mastermind, that's a terrible word, uh, it's a group of four people that are like-minded, uh, similar worldview, but also um, make their own living online, specifically with e-commerce. And we meet once a week, and we rotate every four weeks about whose business we're focusing on. So we we'll short updates about what's going on with someone, and then we kind of dive into one person's business. And that group of people, if you can establish something like that, is so invaluable because you get real, honest feedback about your product, about how you're doing, and sometimes it's just encouragement, you know, to tell you, hey, you're on the right track, remember this is a six-month plan or a year-long plan, and this is month two, you know, don't get disappointed. So I can't encourage you enough to get involved in a mastermind group. This is a talk about WordPress, so we got to talk about WordPress plugins, right? Um, there are a lot of really good membership software options for WordPress. Um, I use WooCommerce with subscriptions and memberships extensions. Those are the two primary and important ones. Uh, iThemes Exchange, Easy Digital Downloads, and Restrict Content Pro from Pippa Williams and both. Uh, Restrict Content Pro has really made a, a surge to, as, a, as a great membership candidate. Paid Membership Pro, Memberful is a hosted option with content restriction integration for WordPress. Rainmaker, hosted option by Copy Blogger. Or if all you're doing is taking money and putting people on an uh, email list, you might be able to do it just through uh, a Stripe or PayPal integration with Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms, something like that. Um, the software is important. The engagement is more important. And I actually would not want to revert the email stuff. Uh, I would not want to rely on these plugins for the email stuff. I would rather people have this restricted content somehow on WordPress that's not as important as uh, getting people into your email list, and then whether it's MailChimp or Constant Contact, Drip, ConvertKit, whatever it is, those are four pretty good options. Uh, do some automation and like automatically welcome them to your service, uh, or give them a renewal notice that their renewal is coming up, or check in on them after a month to see how they're doing. That's where you're really going to gain value from your Side. And that all has to do with the email provider, not so much to do with the software. Uh, one additional tidbit I would note, uh, the reason I chose WooCommerce was because I didn't intend to just sell uh, content restriction in the long run. So I went with WooCommerce because uh, it can also do other things. You can sell other stuff. So if I want to start selling you know, this awesome t-shirt on my website, and I can do that, and I can have shipping all that stuff built in where I might be more limited with a just membership uh, thing. That said, WooCommerce and full-fledged e-commerce options 
just for restricting content and offering memberships might be a little bit of overkill, so just consider what you got there. Stripe versus PayPal. Stripe is awesome, never had a problem with it. PayPal, uh, sometimes you might have a problem with it. I'm going to teach you a trick to make it a little better. The initial problem that you're going to have with membership websites with PayPal, if you don't follow this next trick, uh, is editing your subscriptions. You have to cancel them and redo them because editing stuff in PayPal by default is quite difficult. Also, you're leading off the site. You don't know all that stuff. Um, really cool thing about PayPal is people treat their PayPal balances, like if they keep a PayPal balance, as their like personal little piggy bank that they can spend whatever and however they want. So if you have like a non-necessary business expense membership website, sometimes PayPal is amazing because they're like, that money's not real in my PayPal account, so I'm gonna buy this subscription to this membership site with it. So even though I live in a world of WordPress professionals, e-commerce people that are obsessed with uh, Stripe and like, you know, they're not always so positive about PayPal because of its API or whatever, 50% of them sign up to my website with PayPal. So just consider that. <laughs> now, a way to make PayPal way better for membership websites is something called reference transactions. Um, a reference transaction is a different type of transaction. You have to get it enabled on your account through a support experience with PayPal. Their support is actually pretty good. Um, that allows me, and your, also this is another thing that might affect your uh, e-commerce provider, the WordPress e-commerce options, cross your fingers, I think they're all working towards integrating reference transactions as a feature. WooCommerce with subscriptions already does. Um, and actually, uh, Brent from Prospress was the one who told me about this. Once you get reference transactions enabled, then you can go directly into your WooCommerce install or PayPal or whatever, and you can edit the subscription so that they don't have to cancel and come back. So that way you can delay it, you can change the end date, you can change the amount, whatever it is, in the end you always have these weird things you have to do. Enable reference transactions as soon as possible. Um, I think I might have a free article on this, I shouldn't have known ahead of time, I definitely have a paywall one, um, but I will try to find good documentation for reference transactions early on. Um, we're going to go fast now. Durr. This is like the most important thing, right? You're doing a membership website, you just need to do your thing. You need to be happy about what you're doing. You're all in on this uh, subscription-only thing, and you do not want to burn out. So you need to do your thing. You need to focus. You need to remember that your website, your product, is not for everyone. And sometimes you may point someone out, and you know, uh, Susie is like my ideal customer. And Susie has not signed up for my service yet. I'm really mad about it. Um, that's okay, you know, like sometimes the people that they need your product and you know they need your product, they're just not going to sign up. Don't fret about it, because other people, like Bob, is going to sign up and you never heard Bob. And you just got to celebrate those wins and realize that you're not for everyone. I would recommend automating nothing at all, and that asterisk means until you absolutely have to or have time. Uh, or you have time in the beginning. Automation is actually awesome. Zapier is really helpful for easier automation. It integrates great with a lot of WooCommerce WordPress products. Um, so check out zapier.com for doing some of that. I've been doing more of that recently. Um, but you don't have to do it right up front. You need to launch, but you need to do it. And then the other thing I recommend is offload what you suck at. So if you can afford to have an assistant, administrative person, if you're not good at the type A stuff and being organized, that's important. Uh, that has been huge for me. I hired Katie Richards a little over a year ago. She handles a lot of the administrative stuff, and like it's amazing. It lets me focus on relationships, conversations, and actually writing every now and then, because that's my product. Um, I would also recommend that you be transparent, if that's valuable for your business and your niche. Um, that means being uh, realistic about what your qualifications are on the what topic that you're speaking on, uh, just being honest, being open, transparent. For me in the WordPress world, you know, I've never myself sold a product other than the subscription. So when I'm talking about products, I like to rely on experts that sell products. When I'm talking about client work, I have more experience personally, so I can always just qualify with my own experience, experiences. But I do think transparency is important. Um, and you just want to create stability with this uh, with this adventure. Um, that changes, it's different for different people. 
But I would say stability is part of balance. So it's not just work all the time. For me, WordPress was a hobby before it was a full-time job. And then when it became my full-time job, it was my full-time job and my hobby. So I had to get a new hobby. So for me, that was what creating stability was about. And then just iterate your product and your subscription over time. Some of your early assumptions are not going to be the things that hold up. Uh, for me, I never even thought about doing Slack um, early on. I actually waited two to three months before I asked existing customers, hey, would y'all like Slack as like a place to talk? And now it's probably one of the primary reasons people join, and it's super active, and there's like 10,000 messages a week in that thing. So it's one of the biggest benefits that I have, and I didn't even know it until after lunch. And that's my great day in Lucy Bay and my one-year-old Evan. And they are at home. I miss them very much, and they have to be in my slides. But that's to me that I've done. And thank you very much. Two minutes for questions and then uh, the snack. But I mean, if someone else have more questions. I didn't hear that. One minute. Yeah, <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> I think I probably said like eight thousand words. So. Okay. All right. Feel free to talk to me afterwards. Thank you all so much.